My name is Ian Olasov. I'm a graduate student at the CUNY Graduate Center, and today I want to talk to you about Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem is a fact about probabilities, a version of which was first discovered in the 18th century by Thomas Bayes. The theorem is Bayes' most famous contribution to the mathematical theory of probability. It has a lot of applications, and some philosophers even think it's the key to understanding what it means to think rationally. In order to understand the theorem, though, we'll have to understand a little bit about probabilities. The probability of a proposition is the chance or likelihood that that proposition is true. Suppose you know that one student in a class of 20 has the flu, but you don't know who. If you know that Sally is a student in the class, you would say the probability that Sally has the flu is 1 in 20, or 5%, or 0 0.05. We can call this your prior probability that Sally has the flu, because it's your probability prior to finding out any new information. As a shorthand, we'll write P of Sally has the flu equals 0 0.05. Suppose now that there are 5 girls and 15 boys in the class. Now, you don't know whether the class's flu patient is a boy or a girl, but if you were to find out that the patient was a girl, your probability that Sally has the flu would go up to 1 in 5, or 20%, or 0.2. On the other hand, if you were to find out that the patient was a boy, your probability that Sally has the flu would go down to 0. Because these things are still iffy, though, remember, you don't yet know whether the flu patient is a boy or a girl, we'll call these things conditional probabilities. Your probability that Sally has the flu conditional on the flu patient being a girl is 0.2. Your probability that Sally has the flu given that the flu patient is a boy is 0. As a shorthand, we'll write P of Sally has the flu given that the flu patient is a girl equals 0.2. And P of Sally has the flu given that the flu patient is a boy equals 0. The little vertical line tells you that we're talking about conditional probabilities. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes you don't know what your conditional probabilities should be. In other words, you know that you might encounter some new evidence in the future, but you don't yet know how that evidence should affect the probability you assign to some hypothesis. Here's where Bayes' theorem comes in. It gives you a way of figuring out what your conditional probabilities should be. So what does Bayes' theorem actually say? Remember our shorthand. Your probability in some hypothesis, let's call it H, conditional on some new piece of evidence, let's call it E, is written P of H given E. Here's what Bayes' theorem tells us. P of H given E equals P of E given H times P of H divided by P of E. In other words, it tells us the three ingredients that go into the probability of a hypothesis conditional on some evidence. The probability of the evidence conditional on the hypothesis the prior probability of the hypothesis, and the prior probability of the evidence. Let's look at an example. Imagine that one morning you don't feel right, and you go on WebMD to figure out what's wrong. You're browsing around until you find an illness that catches your eye, hypothesitis. So the hypothesis under consideration is that you've come down with hypothesitis. As you read through the list of symptoms, you realize that you have all of them. In other words, you have all of the symptoms that you would have if you had hypothesitis. So let's say P of E given H, or P of symptoms given hypothesitis, equals 0.95. You begin to freak out, but then you remember Bayes' theorem. It tells you that there are two more things you need to know in order to figure out the probability that you have hypothesitis. The prior probability that you would come down with hypothesitis, and the prior probability that you would have the symptoms that you actually have. With a little more Googling, you discover that the disease is extremely rare. Only 1 in 100,000 people have it. So P of hypothesitis is 0 0.00001. Now for the last ingredient. What kind of symptoms are they? Suppose they're very common, like a headache and a runny nose. Lots of people have those. Google tells you 1 in 100. So P of symptoms, your prior probability that you would come down with the symptoms you have, is 0 0.01. At last, you know everything that you need to know in order to figure out the probability that you have hypothesitis given your symptoms. Bayes' theorem tells you that P of hypothesitis given symptoms equals P of symptoms given hypothesitis times P of hypothesitis divided by P of symptoms. In other words, P of hypothesitis given symptoms equals 0.01.
0.00095, or a little less than 1 in 1,000. Bayes' theorem is very helpful because in figuring out what to make of some new piece of evidence, people often ignore the prior probability of the hypothesis or treat P of H given E as P of E given H. This mistake is sometimes known as the base rate fallacy. In the case we just looked at, P of H given E is very different from P of E given H. One is less than one-tenth of a percent, and the other is 95%. Without Bayes' theorem, you might have gotten a lot more worked up about hypothesitis than you needed to be. Wrapping up then, Bayes' theorem is a formula that tells you how to calculate conditional probabilities, or the probability you should assign to some hypothesis given a piece of evidence. Even if you forget the formula, though, try to remember that the conditional probability of H given E is determined by three things. The conditional probability of E given H, the prior probability of H, and the prior probability of E. If you leave one of those three things out, you don't have a complete picture.